So, I mean, this part of the workshop is called Pathway Network Analysis. So now from now on, until the end of the, the workshop, all the labs will be to use Cytoscape, and we are going to represent all our results using a network in Cytoscape. So then, for, for this reason, I need to give you a brief introduction about network and uh, Cytoscape, and then we would go back to the gene set enrichment results that we just did with GACA to represent them as a network. So the learning objectives of the module, so I hope that at the end of the lecture you would have understood the advantage of network visualization for biological data. So what is an advantage to use a network uh, compared to a table to analyze the results? And I hope that at the end of all the labs and uh, at the end of the, this uh, last two days of the workshop, you will be able to use Cytoscape, install the apps you need, and be able to create and navigate an enrichment map. So let's start by uh, an introduction. Uh, so we are going to, to have like a few definitions of terms. And the first one is different types of networks. So we can have social network, biological data network, we can have any types of network. So here in the example of a social network, what we are doing is we are going to compare entities that are people. So Entities are people, and in this example that is being created with a social network app, we are studying researchers. So researchers, they may collaborate and publish uh, a paper together. And if it's the case, then our two researchers, our two points on the network, will be related by an age. So we are studying how, may, how much the, the researchers work together and if they work together then we get like a dense region of the network that we call a cluster. But we could also do a network with biological data. In, in this example, it's a network of gene. So we have one gene, I'm sorry, one gene that is related to another gene, and we see a line here. So we put a line if the two genes are known to physically interact to each other, if the gene product are known to physically interact to each other. And the common thing between these two networks is that we are studying the interactions. So we are not only interested by the elements of the network, but we are interested by how the elements of the network are connecting each other. So to create our network, first we need a software. In this workshop, we are going to use Cytoscape. Cytoscape is a standalone application, which means a software that you need to download on your computer in order to use it. It's open source and free. It can handle any types of network. So it could handle social network, biological data network, any network you want to create. With Cytoscape, we can play with visual styles. We can move elements of the network around, and we can do network analysis like clustering the network, and Cytoscape has many apps that we can use in addition to the basic pictures. There are other, such as, uh, other software that exist, and I could cite uh, Gephi and Navigator. Gephi, you can also do any types of network, like social networks, biological data networks, and Navigator is more focused on biological data. So this slide, we saw it this morning, but it's important to repeat what is the difference when we say pathway and when we say network. So when we say pathway, it's more like, like a detailed pathway that has been studied over years. For example, in this example, that would be the EGFR receptor pathways. And let's say researchers have studied it a lot, many papers on it, and maybe a curator, a scientific curator, would read all these papers and put the pathway together with a downstream event, upstream event, feedback loops. And when we see network, is is something we got from genomics data. So this is data that we get, and we know the elements of the network, and our data is going to tell us how the elements of the network are going to interact with each other, but it's simply, it's, it's, it's simpler than the pathway, than the real pathway. Question on the, on the three different tools that you mentioned, like the navigator, Gephi, yes. and the Cytoscape. Would there be any reason for using, like, let's say, Gephi or Navigator over Cytoscape? You, you need to look at the features. So I think you need to compare the features, mm -hmm. and then that's where you can design, decide what do you, you need. Do you remember any features of Navigator or Gephi that are not Navigator is, you can't, 
is you cannot customize it with apps, for example. And Giphy is more general, not only for biological data. Yeah, exactly. The, the thing that happens here is that um, I mean, you know, there's going to be a little bias because we're allowed to work inside the screen. Okay. And that's, that's yeah, the benefit, exactly. the benefit of, of having somebody who's an expert at using this tool, which you do all the time. And then the people that develop Navigator are, you know, are jumping all over the two buildings away. And, and they, everybody in that lab uses that tool. And so there's a uh, Cytoscape has probably lost more support uh -huh. in the community, uh -huh. has lost some of the, I'm sort of biased towards Cytoscape, <laughs> and so that's why it should be taught in this course. <laughs> and, uh, but you will, there were, it's a good point to bring up that there will always be bias. One is that's what it says, that's what it says. Uh, sometimes, well, that's what you do with the tools I wanted to do, and others do not, so that's a, that's a good way to uh, connect it. But sometimes two tools can do two different things, uh, but it's more in the finer details, but it's also in the practice, and if you're used to using it, then you're, you're going to go to that one more often, and you're just going to use it. And the big, big thing about Cytoscape is it's, it's, it's much, much more customizable, and you can make it do many, many more different kinds of things. It's the one that's received the most funding from NIH, it's the one that's received the most support from the community, and there's people in all continents working on it, so there's a lot of pros for Cytoscape. I, I mean, but if I had the Developer of Navigator in the room, he'd be a bit upset. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not teaching this course, so. <laughs> and, yeah. So what were you? That's an important question to ask. Okay. And that's why I put the slide because it, I wanted to mention that it's not, not the only one. Okay. It's, it's the one, the only one I use because sure because Gary Bader. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So why would you use network visualization for biological data is because we want to represent the relationships between the molecules. So in our case, the biological molecules will be genes or proteins, most often, but it can be everything else. And it's better to see the relationships. If you look at the Excel table, you may not look, see these relationships. You really need to, to dis display them as a graph to, to be able to see them. And another advantage is yeah, that you can add multiple layers of information on one network. And I think this is very important. So you can, for example, you can um, compare expression data, mutation data, any other phenotype in one network. And I hope that we will see that a little bit in the next three days so you get an, uh, an idea of that. And once we have your, our network, we can do in an unbiased way using like mathetic, ma mathematical me method a network analysis. So it's, it's not biased towards one part of the network, but we, we can really measure what are the, the regions that are more connected than the other ones to find a hub in the networks, for example. So what would be the, like the simple steps when you do network visualizations and analysis? Well, first you, you have downloaded your, your, your software and then you can use your custom, you can create your custom network or use an app to create your network, but at one point you need to upload your data into the, the software. And it usually is like a table format. So again, you can do it in R or you can do it in Excel but you save it as a tab delimited file and this is this file that you are going to import into Cytoscape or any other software to first create the net network and then to add attributes that could be like uh, expression data, mutation data that will combine uh, all together in one network. The simple format that you could have is a gene list, like a list of genes in a text in a tab delimited text format, or so sometimes you can copy and paste the gene list. But more often it's a table with like a few columns and the list of genes. Then you, you create your network, you navigate for the network to understand the relationships that you are studying, you analyze your network, and the last step would be either to export your network table that you have created, maybe to give it to someone else, a collaborator that will continue the work, or very likely you want to produce an image for publication. So you create a nice image, you export, and that's the end of your analysis. So some definition of terms, very important. You need to know what a node is and an age. So node and age are the 
the elements of the networks. So the node would be the, um, the circle in general, so this, this red circle, and it's the molecule. So in our case, probably genes, protein, or pathways. So the, the element of the network that you are studying. And the lines are called the edge. So the lines represent the interaction, the relationships between two nodes. So graph is another word for network. Mostly, I think you are going to see undirected graphs. So undirected graphs, you can see that the edges, they don't have any directions. They are not have any errors. But sometimes you see errors like this. In general, it means gene A activates gene B, something like that. So you need to understand what the direction means. And very, very often, you will see that these edges, they are different. They don't have the same width. So one has like is thicker than the other one. When you see this, is because you've put a weight on the edges, and you do it when you want to emphasize that uh, relationships between A1 and A3 is maybe stronger than the relationship between A1 and A2. So in this example, let's say we have uh, samples, we have different patients, and it's gene expression data then we can, can construct this heat map to see the correlations between the patients. If the correlation is high, then the correlation coefficient is going to be, let's say, between 0 0.8 and 1. This is this uh, dark orange color. So maybe this is A9. So A9 and A8, they have a strong correlation. If you have a strong correlation, we put a weight of 3. If there is a weak correlation between A9 and A3, Maybe we put a, eight, a weight of 1. Yeah? So then we go back to our table and we construct a table for each age. So the age A1 and between A1 and A2, the weight is 1. The age between A8 and A9, the weight is 3. And then we save this as a tab delimited text. We imported this into the software. And this way we can put weight for our edges. Also for the network layout, there is no network with no layout, yeah? So if you don't put any layout, what you have is a hairball. And on a hairball, everything has the same distance. So the nodes are overlapping, the edges are overlapping. There is no topology, you can't, you can't see anything and you can't interpret anything. You can't analyze your network. So you need to, to have a network with a topology. And for that, we, we apply an, a layout. In this case, it's the force directed layout. And how, how it works, it's that the nodes, the nodes are considered like negative forces. So if two negative forces come together, they try to repel each other. But the edges are like springs and they pull. So they try to, to connect the nodes together. So if you have a lot of edges, then they will pull and they will form a group. But if two nodes are not connected by many in edge, then the distance is going to grow. So that's the way it works to lay out the network so it's not overlapping and you can see regions that are more connected than other ones. And here are three slides that I took from a video where a force-directed layout is uh, being applied. So you see the, the different step because it's an iterative pro process, yes? Yes. Okay, so what if, and that's when they, is it direction, is it up? Um, so, so let's say you have um, gene expression data, and you have uh, 300 genes that are significantly different, differently expressed, and you have um, 100 ones that are up-regulated, 100 ones that are down-regulated, then they the same genes will be upregulated in the sample A8 and in the sample A9. And the same for the downregulated. So you have like a overall good correlations between the two samples. So you have a two matrices. One is for the upregulation. The genes are upregulated. 
Uh, not really, because the, the correlation coefficient is going to look at the, all the genes together. So it's like an overall... Yeah, it, it depends on your question, yeah? The bio biological question you want to answer. But if it's a positive correlation, it means all the genes that are up in patient A8 are also up in patient A9. And globally, it's a trend, yeah? And if it's downregulated in A9, then it's downregulated in A8. So like a perfect correlation of one, because it would be that the, all the genes go in the same direction between A8 and A9. If it's It's negative, okay, if it's a negative correlation, like if, if, the, if the R is less than zero, then maybe you put the weight to, to, to 0 0.5. Or it depends on your questions. So here you want to, in these questions, you want to join the patients that have a strong correlation. But if it's a negative correlation, then they are not correlated. You may don't want to draw any edges in this case. It depends on, on the question. So the question here that I put for the example is, we have patients. The patients are represented by nodes. Try to connect the patients that have a correlation together. So that's a positive correlation, so from 0 to 1. If they have a negative correlation, then just don't draw any edge because they are not correlated. So there will not be edges for, for, for negative correlation coefficient. That's just an example to, to, to see how you could use weight for the edges. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can do your correlation in different ways, yeah. Okay, so I think I was here, and um, so there are three snapshots, and you see at the, at the beginning the nodes are overlapping, but when the algorithm is progressing, then you see that the, the nodes are repelling each other, and at the stage number three, the network is perfectly stretched out, and you can continue your analysis. So... Network analysis would mean to find the sub-networks in, in the network. So, for example, cluster or modules, you can find a path between the nodes, so which is the shortest path between two points of the networks, or you, wa you want to try to find the central nodes in the network, like a hub genes. So, all the slides could be applied to any software. And now we are going to speak more uh, about Cytoscape and what we can do with Cytoscape. So I was said before, Cytoscape is an open source software used for uh, visualization of complex network. And the, let's say the main feature of Cytoscape is that there is a lot of apps that are available. And it's because Cytoscape is open and free. And so there are many communities that are working together to develop Cytoscapes and anyone one of you could develop an app if, with some uh, programming, programming skills. So whenever you need to do, you can build the app and use it in Cytoscape. And this is an example of a network uh, built with Cytoscape. And I hope I'm going to use this, this example to show you how we can merge different layers of information in one network. So the data is from um, copy number variants for studying autism spectrum disorder. So copy number, so it's rare copy number variants, so gain or deletions of DNAs when we compare autism cases to normal cases. And then, so the researchers retrieved a gene list that were in this region of rare copy number variants associated with autism cases versus uh, normal cases. So the starting point was a gene list. 
not like not a very large gene list, but a medium-sized gene list. And then they asked, in my gene list related to autism, do I have genes that belong to same pathways? So what they did, they did pathway enrichment analysis using the same technique as you re, um, explained you using G-Provider. And then they found significantly pathways. So genes are enriched in some of the pathway, and this is this right part of the network when you see the red and the pink knots. So each node, pink or red, is a pathway enriched in genes from the autism, autism list. And that's a lot of results already, but when the researchers look at the results, well, they didn't know where to start. They didn't know which pathway would be better on how it could relate to autism. So they got the idea to add another layer of information. They took some databases with known genes to uh, intellectual disability, autism, or they combined both. And they merged this uh, result to the pathway. So they take these known genes, they did pathway enrichment to see in which pathway did these genes were enriched and they put this on the network. And what they could see are overlaps. And that's what they found very interesting. For example, this cluster, which is a CNS development, where the known genes would overlap with the new data. So I think in a way that gave them uh, confidence and then they could start to focus on this um, cluster of pathway to further study the mechanism of autism. So an example, where you can merge two layers of information to further interpret your data. But before doing such a complicated network, let's start by the basic. And what you could do is to create your own network using your table. Let's say you have pull-down experiment. So maybe proteomics or maybe like a micro RNA, if you have like clip seq data, when you have your macro RNA and you want to see uh, where the micro RNA binds, any, anything. And so here you have a pull down experiment and you know that bar one in your experiment is known to interact with MCM1. So you can create this table, uh, this, uh, table in Excel, you save as a tab delimited file. And maybe you can add extra layers of information, yeah? Maybe you know the mutation status of these genes, and may maybe you know this expression level, so that your second table, that in cytoskip, you would import as a node attribute. And then you will have your network here. So the first table would be used to create your network. That would create the nodes and the edges. The second table, the mutation data, Maybe you could use it to put the colors on the network. If your gene has many mutations, maybe you can associate this with a darker color. And finally, the third information, maybe you could put this as a node size. If you, your genes has a high level of expression, then you could put like a, a large node for it. So it's all relative to your table. So that's the way you can add three layers of information. So if you don't want to create your own networks, then you can use an app to do it. And there are many, many apps. So the first thing you do that is to go to the App Store. So you can follow this link or you can Google uh, Cytoscape App Store. And this is the world of apps. And I think I've counted like, the, like yesterday, I think it was 314 apps. So it's a lot. It looks overwhelming like this, but actually they are organized by categories, like data visualization, network generation, graph analysis, online data import, network analysis. So, I'm sorry? <laughs> I could. That would be good, U using the categories. So, yeah, so, so, so personally, I use most often the, the gene ontology and gene set enrichment categories. But here are, like, for example, three categories that you could use to generate your network. First, you choose an app to generate your network, so you don't have to do it manually. Then maybe you want to cluster your network, so you use an app to cluster your network. And maybe you have done two networks, or three or four networks, and you want to compare it. Then you use the app to, to, to compare the networks. So what would be the advantage of using network uh, biology? So I can explain you uh, the description of a few apps. 
So for example, gene mania. Gene mania, we are going to do it tomorrow afternoon. And it's gene function prediction category. So what is gene mania is doing is try to predict the, the, um, the function of a gene. So it works by guilt by association. For example, if you don't know me, but you would be able to, to know six of my best friends, maybe you would have a better idea of what I like and who I am. It's the same for a gene. You don't know anything about the gene, but if you could find six genes that are related to, to my unknown genes, maybe you would have a better guess of the function of these genes. So that's the way gene mania is working and we are going to have a lecture and lab on it tomorrow. This one, M-code, is to, is to uh, detect the structure in a network, like the complex, but like um, very simple for you, like the clustering. So the cluster, it can also detect uh, motifs. Animal, so it's the one if you really want to dig in in the pathway. So you are studying your favorite pathways and you have multiple data on it. Let's say maybe it's a, it's a reaction, like a, a cascade of reactions, like enzymatic reactions. And you want to study this as multiple time points and you want to do modeling. Or maybe you have mutated one enzyme in this pathway and you want to understand how the mutation of the enzyme would affect the flux of the pathway. Then there are some apps to do that and Animo is one of them. Paper is for proteomics data. I don't know if you have proteomics data, but for if you have one, then you know that we have, you have missing data. Proteomics, they are peptides that are better detected than other. Peptides fly well, peptides don't fly well, so you have missing points. So what you could do is create your network with, using your proteomics data and add an extra layer of information from public database. So like a protein, protein interaction database, and paper is going to combine the two to infer the missing links so you can have your full protein complexes. Uh, maybe another one, this one, PathBlast, is in the category of network evolution. So it could compare different ne network uh, across species. Sometimes network uh, biology is, is used like with a focus to disease. And for example, it could be used as a classifier. So we built a network. A general network and we see how the network is different when we have a disease case compared to normal case and then when we add a new sample then we can classify it in the disease or in the normal cases. So that's where example of how we can use a network analysis for biological data but what is missing? What is missing is the dynamics and it's the same as when we say what is the difference between a pathway and a network. Actually all our networks are very simple compared to the reality and they represent static processes. So if you want to do like real modeling of a pathway, you can do it, but you need to have the data with it. So you can, you need to take uh, multiple, uh, multiple data points or something like that and do some modeling. Uh, so if you do proteo proteomics, protein protein network, what is failing is the atomic structure of the proteins. So the 3D structure of the protein, we don't see this in the network. And also most important, I think, is the context. Because usually when we draw a network, we take all the genes in the genome, yeah? But in your cell, not all the genes in the genome are going to be expressed. It could be also um, like a different if your cell is cycling versus quiescent. It can also be different using the development stage and usually we don't take this into account we just take all the genes so if you know maybe that you are studying brain or maybe a certain developmental stage and you are able to filter out your network for the genes that are expressed in this tissue only then it's good to do it but that's going to be the second step so what have we learned we learned that networks are useful for seeing relationships in large data sets it's important to understand what the nodes and edges mean. So each time you have a network, you see the circles, you see the edges. So you, you need to ask the question, so do the, do the nodes represent genes or proteins or pathways? Because in our case, like today, the nodes are going to represent pathways, but tomorrow they are going to represent genes. So it's different. And the edges, what are the edges? Today, 
the edges are going to be the number of genes that are common into two pathways. But tomorrow, maybe the edges are going to, no to be the, um, the physical interaction between the two proteins. So yeah, many methods and many apps are available to, 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 to study uh, your data. But what do you need? I think to answer this question, you need to define your biological question first. And try to define one biological question at a time. And then when it's clear, then you can look for the apps you need. And if you don't know the answer, you don't know which app you need, then you can use a mailing list like Biostar to answer your questions. Okay, so do you have questions about this introduction? No? So you're ready to, to move on and, and start a little bit. So, so before uh, starting the, the enrichment map, I will try to present like the main um, feature of Cytoscape. I mean, you, you, I think it was in the pre-readings and the tutorials, but just in case, I'm going to review some, some of them. So when you open Cytoscape, then you have uh, the main window, and it's divided into four parts. On the left, you have the control panel. Below that, you have the table panel. On the right, you have the result panel. So here you have like a toolbar and for example you can save your session and reopen it later or you can save the image of your network. For sure you can navigate for the network. So to navigate for the network then you click, so you do like a left click and you, 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 you move the network around or you can use an eye bird view which is on the right side, at the bottom right side of the window. Or you can zoom in and you can zoom out. You can have different layouts. So I've showed you the force directed layout, but there are other ones like the circular layout that you can find in the layout menu or the organic layout. So the organic layout is my preferred layout in Cytoscape 3.4. So it's a kind of force directed layout, but it stretched the network even more uh, than the, the force directed. You can change the visual style, so you go to the control panel, and in the control panel you have this style tab, and here you can change the color of the nodes, you can change the shapes of the nodes, also the edges and the background. So this is an example on how to play with visual style. So first you create your network, and then on the second, um, as a second step, you want to import your table of attributes. So here is gene expression, so we are going to color the node, based on gene expression. So we've uploaded our table of gene expression. We go to style here, and then under uh, a field color, we choose the, the, the right column, and then we can set up a scale of uh, color. And that will be like this. So if it's a high expression, the nodes will be red. If it's a low expression, then the, the nodes will be green. I think it's the opposite here. It's um, low red and high green, but I usually do the opposite. Um, once your network is created and you want to make like a nicer figure, then you can rotate, you can scale, and you can align your nodes. When you have a big network, maybe you, can, you want to focus on one region of the network. What you can do is to select these nodes using your mouse, so they become yellow, and then after that you create a sub-network. You can automatically filter the network, so for example you can uh, only select the nodes that have like a, uh, we'll see uh, later, like a positive enrichment score, so you can do it automatically in the select tab. So now back to the, back to early, earlier this day and in the workshop, where are we? So if we're here, it's because we obtained a gene list already, so maybe we've collected from genomics data for RNA-seq and we did a good job, we did normalization, we did uh, statistical testing to get the differential express genes, and we, are, uh, we have our gene list. And uh, Yuri um, showed us that we could compare our gene list to pathway database, to do pathway enrichment, to see if our genes in enrich in certain pathways, like signaling pathway or biological processes. And now we're here. We want to visualize and identify interesting pathways and networks, and later on, then we may want to add extra information of the network that we have generated, like macroarray targets or transcription fact factors of drugs that have targets in the network, and so on. So the gene list, 
you can have, depending on the experiment you have, you can have like a, a very large in list, many, many, many results from your differential expression analysis. Maybe you have a medium sized gene list or you have like a small size gene list. So if you have like a, as the example in the lab, you are comparing two populations that are very, very different and you expect a lot of genes that are significantly uh, differentially expressed and consequently a number, uh, a high number of pathways that are uh, significant. So if you're in this case, then you go directly to enrichment map to represent the results as a pathway network. So the nodes are going to be pathways. If you have a medium gene list, so not too many, maybe you have like a few, one, two, three pathway that are significant. Well, you don't need to represent the network as a pathway. You are going to go directly to a gene gene network that we are going to see tomorrow, where you represent each gene in the network, and then you can put color depending on the pathway they, they belong to. If you have a very small genes, it happens sometimes with mutation data, and people come say, hey, hey, I have my gene list, yeah, 20 genes, uh, can you do a pathway enrichment analysis for me? I say, yeah, sure, but I'm not going to, to use like a G profiler or GACA, because what you want is almost to predict the function of your genes, or you predict how they they, they could interact, so you want to expand your list in this case. And uh, so you can add linkers to your network. And we are going to see it tomorrow with Reactom FI with the options linkers or Gene Mania, so to expand your network. So that's the three modes. But mostly today, we are going to follow our basic example like we are studying population A and population B, they are really different. We did RNA-seq on it. We are going to run GACA, and then from the GACA results, we are going to create an enrichment map. So again, so the output of GACA, two tables, one for the pathway that are enriched in genes that are upregulated in population A versus B, and one table for the genes that are downregulated in population A versus population B. And then we are going to upload our results into enrichment map. And then each pathway is going to become a node. So each of these pathways are going to be red nodes. And all this pathway here in the blue table are going to be blue node. And if these two pathways here share a significant amount of genes in common, then they are going to be related by an age. And the thickness of the H is going to be calculated using the overlap coefficient, which basically calculate the number of genes that overlap normalized by the size of the pathway. So the thicker the H, the higher the number of genes in common between the two pathways. So from the tabular format, we go to a network analysis and the color of the nodes, they could indicate the significance of the score of the pathway results. So your GACA, you have the top pathway, uh, pathway number one with an NES score that is maybe 2.3, then 2.3 is going to be a bright red. If we have a pathway that is enriched but with a lower score, maybe 1.4, then we are going to put it pink. So we are going to use the node color to indicate the significance of the, of the pathway enrichment. So this is an example of an enrichment map. And you see, so all the nodes are the pathway. And if the pathway have many genes in common, then they, they form a cluster on the network. And then we can label the cluster using the gene set. So all these individual nodes are pathway. Because the database are redundant, then they're all related to, to the DNA metabolism function. So if we could read the individual name of the pathway, then we could see that it's, it's, it's really all DNA metabolism. So we just put a circle that the, the app is doing automatically, and we label this as DNA metabolism. So maybe the GCA table gave us like 300 results, but basically it's one, two, three, four biological functions. So we first summarize a gene list into gene sets, and then we create this network that will do some cluster 
to summarize further into biological functions. So usually, even like, like 600 gene sets, I would say that at the maximum, I can identify 20 different biological functions. So just here as an example, we have uh, breast cancer cells that were treated with estrogen, so control and treated, and we had two time points, 12 hours and 24 hours. Then the first thing to do is to create one map at 24 hours, and that's it. This, this is it. So we have all the genes in red, and rich in genes up regulated, and a few pathway and rich in genes down regulated at the time point of 24 hours. What we could do also is add the additional time point on the same map, on the same network, and then it will look like this. And the difference you see is this white spot. So what we did here, when we uploaded two different data sets, so data set 1 and data set 2, is we assigned data set 1 to the node center and data set 2 to the node border. So if you see a node that is all red, it means the results are similar at 12 hour and 24 hour. But if you see here a difference because the inner center is 12 hours, we can see here, then it means there were no significantly significant difference at 12 hours. But when we wait until 12 hours, then the pathway becomes significant. So with enrichment map, you can compare two time points. And you can do more using the pie charts options. So now when you click on a node, so a node is a pathway. A pathway contains many genes. So you can click on the node and actually see the genes. And if you have uploaded what we call an expression file, for example, if you have RNA-seq data, let's say you, you, you can upload the normalized count data, better the count per million data for each of your patients, if you're, each of your samples. That when you click on a node, then you can see the expression pattern for all your samples, and it's a good quality control. So when I click on this node, I see that my at 12 hours, my patients have an up regulations of the genes compared to my control, but in this case, the difference was not obvious at 24 hours. And in this case, it was only at 24 hours that my patients showed, my treated patients showed an upregulation of these genes in this particular pathway here. Another way to um, overlay extra information on the network is to use what we call the post analysis feature of enrichment map. And here we add an additional gene set to the map. Here it's, I think, it's proteomics data or rna -seq. This one is rna -seq data and it's a um, knockdown of a microRNA. So if you knock down a microRNA, what you suppose that the genes that were silenced by the microRNA are going to be upregulated compared to the control. So now we add the microRNA predicted targets to the network and we see that they overlap significantly with many of these pathways that were upregulated. So this is something that we do with microRNA or transcription factor to identify where the targets are in the network. And this is an example of proteomics data to mention that we don't uh, have to, to have gene expression data, we can do the network with any data, like so, for example, here proteomics. This is uh, the application World Cloud. So when you have uh, a cluster of pathways, each pathway has a label, and we want to summarize this cluster using the most frequent words, then we can use this application. And this application is used in um, what we call auto annotate. So when you've created your network and you want to draw these circle, this circles, this cluster with a label, then you can use the auto annotate application and that will use both slides to do it. Okay, so we saw this slide uh, already, just to mention that it has been created with uh, the application enrichment map. And this slide is to mention is, is, is to show you how it looks like on the on the real uh, cytoscape. So this is the input panel where you are going to upload the, the GAC table, 
and a GMT file and a rank file and then you are going to build your map and then you are going to see your network and if you click on a node, only if you click on a node then at the bottom on the table panel you are going to see the heat map you can see the node heat map or the edge heat map that are going to show you the, um, the genes that are including in the pathway that you've selected and highlight, highlighted in yellow are the leading edge, the GACA leading edge I don't know if you remember the one in green when we had this GACA table and they say core enrichment, yes, 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 then now they are here in yellow. So we know that these genes in yellow are the most important because they are the ones that are participating to create the, the, the pathway enrichment score. So tips for publishable enrichment maps. When you've created your enrichment maps and you interpret it and you satisfy it with the results, maybe uh, you want to put this as a figure for your publication so you, you need to make it a bit nicer so you are allowed to, to move nodes around maybe if they are too dense you, you, may, you can put them apart and you can uh, play with the visual styles and when, when you're happy with it you export it as an image and sometimes you, you can edit like the labels using a graphic editors okay so that was um, Oof, uh, my colleague who developed enrichment map who created a cake but I was even before my time this was before I joined the, the lab so I didn't couldn't taste it yeah okay any questions on enrichment map or you want to try it now